In this video, we're going to define two new terms that apply to transformations, one to one and onto. And then we're going to try to relate those terms back to our so-called big theorem that we've seen before. I want you to think about a transformation that I'm going to call T. And my transformation is going to have a domain, a set of inputs, and, and typically we're going to label that to be Rn. And then those inputs are transformed by the transformation into outputs, and the outputs typically live in Rm. And you can sort of sometimes visualize it. Let me suppose uh, n and m are both equal to 2. So I have some two-dimensional space, and then the transformation picks up the vectors and spits them down out here in some output. So this is the transformation from R2 to R2, and, and perhaps it's the case that, that this vector here is going to come along and transform into that vector. And if that's x, then this is going to be t of x down here. I just made up a, a random transformation, at least that's how it applies to this one vector. Now, there are a couple of different questions I could ask given this setup. One is this. If my codomain, that's the, the portion on the right, that's my output, this is my codomain, is it the case that the transformation takes something to every vector in the codomain? As in, is, is every single vector over here hit by something from the domain? Uh, we noticed, for example, that, that this t of x was hit by the vector x, that, that x under the transformation became this t of x. But, but if I draw some like other random vector like that one, is it the case that somewhere over here, and I don't know where it would be, but is it the case that there's some purple vector in the domain that's going to hit this output? So that's going to be our first property, and it's going to be called onto. A transformation is onto if every single thing in the so that's going to be our first property we are going to find the notion of onto if every single thing in my codomain gets hit by something coming from the domain and that that for every vector you might have in your codomain there's some other vector in the domain that transforms into it Another way to say this is that for any y in my codomain, there is an x inside of my domain such that the transformation of x is just going to be y. I'm going to get rid of my purple vectors here, and I'm going to ask a different question. We know that in this scenario, x is going to go to t of x, but it could also be that we have some other vector. Maybe I'll call the first one x1, and, and now I'll call this one x2. And it could be the case that the transformation on x2 is the exact same thing as the transformation on x1. In other words, that the t of x1 is just the same thing as the t of the x2. That could be the case. And then it could be the case that there's double ups or, or triple ups. In a really extreme case, imagine that you're transformation is the so-called zero transformation that takes every vector to zero. In that case, there's a sort of infinite pileup where every vector in the domain all just lumps together on top of the exact same vector in the codomain. By the way, that would surely not be onto, because if it only hits the zero vector, it's certainly not here in everything. But the more important point is I want some terminology for whether or not every pair of vectors in my domain go to different things in my codomain, or whether there's cases where things in my domain sort of collapse and end up being transformed to the same thing. And when that's not the case, when, when every pair of vectors go to two different things, that's going to be called one-to-one. -one. I've written this out a little bit differently, but it really is the same idea. We're saying that if you ever have a matching in your codomain, then it must have been the case that you would have matching in your domain as well. That is, if t of x1 equaled t of x2 in your codomain, then the next one had to equal x2 in your domain. And if the function is not one-to-one, -one, it could be the case that they were different in the domain, but were equal in the codomain. 
Note, by the way, that these are not intrinsically anything to do with linear algebra. If you're taking multivariable calculus, you can analyze functions as being one-to-one -one or onto, just the same as here we're analyzing linear transformations as being one-to-one -one or onto. But either way, these are two very important and, and sort of fundamental ways to categorize different types of transformations. Now, we can connect these properties more directly into the linear algebra situation by taking as an example a matrix A, which I'm going to write into its REF form, perhaps something like this. And we have a, a matrix of this kind of form. Now, if I try to study what the solutions to this are going to look like, well, we notice that I've got two different free columns. And what that tells me is that because I have a free column, if I have a solution, if I have a solution, then I have the two free columns and there's in fact infinitely many solutions. So in other words, if I have this matrix A, which I've written down here, and if I, if I look at AX equal to B, and if this is going to have a solution, then because of the free columns, it is going to have infinitely many solutions. And that's another way of saying that this system, AX equal to B, thinking of A as a transformation that takes X in my domain and transforms it into B, that for the, for the one B, there's in fact infinitely many things in my domain that all lump on top of it. And so this is very much not going to be one to one, which is my shorthand way of writing it. However, I'm also going to note that because of this row of zeros that I have down here, that in fact, not all Bs are going to be satisfied. If you can imagine, if you had a B that had a one in that third component, then AX equal to B is not solvable. So in other words, AX equal to B is not solvable for all values of B, only some values of B. In other words, I cannot transform vectors into every single output, and so it is not onto. And this matrix that I have is an example of a transformation that turns out to be neither one-to-one -one nor onto. Remember the big theorem that we used to talk about? This theorem where there was this fourfold list of equivalent properties. If you had any one on the list, you got any of the others. Now, I want you to focus for a moment on the third of the things on the list. It says, for every B in RM, so that's everything in my codomain, then the equation AX equal to B has a solution. But if I think about AX as a transformation, it's a, it's a matrix transformation, it takes X, it applies A to it and it spits out B, then what we're saying is that there, by saying there is a solution, we're saying that there is an X such that the transformation applied to that X is going to equal to B. In other words, this is the same thing and I can add to my list of saying that the transformation, which is described by the matrix A times X is going to be onto. Every single vector B in the codomain is hit by something by the X. This big theorem, by the way, which we now get to call part two, has sort of an equivalent side for all of these five properties. They all change. And in this particular case, we could ask, well, what if it wasn't a transformation that was onto our transformation was one-to-one, -one, and then all of these conditions are going to change appropriately. But I'm going to leave that as something for you to think about.